This is the Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number three from the June 2023 International A-Level Mechanics M1 paper from the Edexcel board. And this question here um, is about vertical motion under gravity. It says, two students observe a book of mass 0.2 kilograms fall vertically from rest from a shelf that is 1.5 meters above the floor. Student A suggests that the book is modeled as a particle falling freely under gravity. Use student A's model to find the time taken for the book to reach the floor. So you've got, you know, the book, which is somewhere up here. And you have the floor, which is over there. Okay, so it's going to start from this point, I call it O, and it's going to end up at this point, I'm going to call it A. So it's going to fall, and it's going to start at rest. Okay, so you can say that the initial speed of this is going to be zero meters per second. And its final speed will be what it reaches over here, which we don't know. Okay, call it V. Okay, so I'll just, I'll just write here, that's zero meters per second, that's V. And this is when time equals zero. And um, we have to find the time that it is over here. Okay, what else do we know that this the distance it's fallen through is 1.5 meters. Okay, so this distance is 1.5 meters. We know that it's falling freely under gravity, so it's accelerating towards the ground with g um, as its acceleration, which we're going to take as 9.8. Um, so now what we can do here is we can, we also know the mass of the object is 0 0.2 kilograms, but because we have no air resistance or anything else like that, you know, we don't have to worry about the mass in this case. We're going to just straight away use the SUVA equations and let's see, we have to find the time. So we need this. We know the displacement. Now, very important here is for us to understand direction. Now, what I like to do, maybe not everyone does this. But what I like to do is I like to choose the direction that the object was moving in at the start of the, the, the period that I'm, you know, or the, the levels that I'm considering, the beginning. So we are considering what's happening from O to A. And O is where, is this point over here, which is 1.5 meters above the floor. So as it's going down at that stage, as it's, as it's, it's, it's released from rest, it's going to head down, so it's going to start heading downwards. So I'm going to take down as positive. So if down is positive, then S is 1.5 meters. It's going to be positive 1.5 meters. U is going to be zero. V, we don't know. A is going to be also positive 9.8 meters per second squared. Why? Because A acts downwards, and we've taken down as positive, and T is what we have to find. So we have to find what T is. So we have got to deal with T and A, and we know what U is, we know what S is. So we've got to use one of the equations of motion that involves S, U, A, and T. Okay, so the only equation that involves those without the V is S equals U, T plus a half A, T squared. All right, so you're going to have, we know S is 1.5. We know U is 0, so this is just going to become 0. It's going to be a half times 9.8 times t squared so we end up with 1.5 over 4.9 equals t squared so therefore t is going to be so we take this will be 4.9 well actually the square root of 4.9 divide 1.5 over 4.9 so the square root of it's like 14 over 15 over 49 Okay, so that's going to give us root 15 over 7. So initially it will give us plus or minus root 15 over 7. Of course, the minus doesn't make sense for time. So it's going to be root 15 over 7, which is, as a decimal, 0 0.5532, 0 0.5532 seconds. So you're going to have time equals 0 0.5532. 
three seconds. Now, I could write my answer to 3SF. That's acceptable. And I can also write it to 2SF because we've used G. So I could, if I write 0 0.55 seconds, that's correct. That's also correct. You can write it in both of those, and it's perfectly fine because we use G. I would suggest you, you stick to 3SF, seeing as it's acceptable in any case. 2SF would not be acceptable if we had not used G, but 3SF is acceptable in both cases. So that's a safer option. But either of those would be acceptable in this answer. So there's the answer for part A, okay? And the time it took to fall when there's no um, air resistance, it's just falling freely under gravity. Now for part B of this question, student B has suggested an improved model where the book is modeled as a particle, experience a constant resistance to motion of magnitude R newtons. Given that the time taken for the book to reach the floor is 0 0.6 seconds, use students B, student B's model to find the value of R. So now we have to consider the forces acting on this mass, okay? So we're gonna have the book, which actually doesn't draw the book, just draw something that looks like this. Okay, so we got the book. You have the weight of the book, which was, as we said, I think two, 0 0.2 kilograms. So that's gonna be 0 0.2 G Newtons, that's the weight. But now you have the air resistance, which is R. Okay, so you got the air resistance and the weight now of the book, which are going to act on this book. So the resultant force, the resultant force is going to be the mass times the acceleration. Okay, so we need to find the acceleration for us to be able to find um, the time. Okay, we need to find the acceleration. That's the key, because if we're going to use SUVAT now, we need to know the acceleration. So to find the acceleration, we can consider the resultant force. Now the resultant force here is going to be r minus, well, actually not r minus, y, it's going down. So again, we've got to think about the direction. So this is moving downward, so the, the, the direction of the acceleration is down. So I'm going to take down as positive. So if I resolve the forces taking down as positive, I'll say 0 0.2g minus the resistance force is equal to the mass times acceleration, which is 0 0.2 times a, okay? So to find the resistance force, I need to find the acceleration now. Okay, now, so in this case, what we have to do actually is, so what, we've got this set up, we're ready to find what R is, we need A. So now let's use the SUVAT equations to find A. I think we can do that here because um, we have S, U, V, A, and T. Now we can't take A this time as um, 9.8 because it's not falling freely under gravity. We have to find what A is. So let's call this B, O, and now let's call this, well, let's still call it A, no problem. All right, so we know that the distance is traveled. Okay, was, we found it earlier. How much was it? It was 1.5 meters. So it's fallen 1.5 meters. We know the initial velocity was zero meters per second, of course. And we know the final velocity we don't know. Okay, but we know that this is time equals zero. And here we know that time equals, this is what the information they give us extra, time equals 0 0.6 seconds. So here we know S, and I'm gonna take again down as positive as it's gonna be moving downwards. S is equal to positive 1.5, U is equal to zero, V we don't know. A, we have to find, okay, and T is 0 0.6. So in this case, we've got to deal with S and U and T because we know them and we want to find A, so we've got to deal with A. So again, we're going to use S equals, S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So we have 1.5 equals UT is going to be zero because U is zero. Um, a half times A, which we have to find, times 0 0.6 squared. So you'll end up with A is equal to 2 times 1.5 over 0 0.6 squared. So the acceleration is going to be, if we work that out, that's going to be 3 over 0 0.6 squared. So 2 times 1.5 is, is 3, of course. So that's going to give us 25 over 3. I'll leave it like this, 25 over 3 meters per second squared. I'll leave it like this because it's an exact value. And then... 
We'll use that in our equation now. So now we can put it in here to find what R is. So I can say that um, 0 0.2 times 9.8 minus R is equal to 0 0.2 times 25 over 3. R is, so I'm going to have 0 0.2 times 9.8 minus 0 0.2 times 25 over 3 equals R. So R is going to be equal to 2 times 9.8 minus, sorry, be careful, that's 0 0.2. 0 0.2 times 9.8. minus 0 0.2 times 25 over 3 and that gives us 22 over 75 22 over 75 which we can round to 3SF that gives us 0 0.2933 0 0.2933 3 continues so R is equal to 0 0.29 3 newtons, and as we used G in the question, we could also say R equals 0 0.29 newtons. Both of those will be acceptable answers for this question, and I guess even this would be acceptable. You could, I think you could put all of these three versions of the answer, and it would be fine. So that concludes question number three from the June 2023 paper from um, Edexcel. Mechanics 1. Other questions from this paper can be found in this um, playlist that will be linked in this area over here at the end of the video. Other questions from this topic of, I guess it's dynamics. So you have, I'll put the first one, constant acceleration. Okay, and here, dynamics. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.